Uh, all right. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, all. Um, uh, many thanks to the organisers of this conference for the opportunity to come and tell the the Kirk and Lake Gold story. Um, it's still a relatively new story in the Australian um, space, so uh, so happy to share that and step through it. Uh, I'll definitely be making some forward-looking statements, so I draw your attention to our um, cautionary note. Uh, Kirk and Lake Gold itself. Um, really came into being um, in its current form in, in 2016. Um, originally, with um, in early 2016, with the combination of two um, Canadian-based um, companies, Kirkland Lake Gold and St Andrews Goldfields, um, and then towards the end of 2016, um, into Australia with the um, combination with New Market Gold. So we brought these three pieces together. They were all together by the end of 2016. Uh, the share price graph you see there is from the start of 2017, so it's really the start of that period. Uh, and we've been richly rewarded, it's, um, it's fair to say. And that's really been on the basis of growing low-cost production, um, industry-leading earnings and, and cash flow. And I want to emphasise cash flow, because I'll come back to this as well. Um, uh, exploration success and reserve growth, increasing quarterly dividend, repurchasing shares, um, and, uh, and no debt. So um, we'll, uh, we'll share some details with that. But, but really, it's about two flagship high-grade mining operations. So in Australia, the Fossilville Gold Mine in, um, in Victoria, which I'll um, share some details on, uh, and Macassar in Ontario in, uh, in, in Canada. Um, you can see the grades there. These are stunning industry-leading uh, grades. So uh, 2.7 million ounces of reserves at Fossilville at 31 grams per tonne uh, at the end of 2018. Uh, and 2.2 million ounces at 22 grams per tonne at Macassar. What they have translated to then is also exceptional um, cost metrics uh, and exceptional margins, uh, which we'll talk further about. Uh, rapid growth. So as I've, um, as I've touched on, the company came together in 2016. Uh, so um, the full year of production you see there in 2017, the 600,000 ounces, was from the current set of assets. Uh, this year, we're guiding towards 950 to, to a million um, ounces of, of annual production, um, having also closed and sold some of that portfolio. So this has been from our, um, our existing production base, uh, and we've grown it um, substantially over that period. Three production centres, Fosterville, Macassar, and also the Holt Complex in, um, in, in, on, in Ontario. What isn't here, uh, is, uh, is our other growth opportunity, which is our Northern Territory um, operations as well, which um, we've restarted the, the mill at Union Reefs. We're doing some trial processing. Um, we haven't made a commitment to commercial production um, as yet, but, uh, but gee, we're, getting, uh, we're getting close. We're, uh, we're hurrying up quickly. Um, strong performance uh, year to date. So uh, in, uh, in the first half, uh, record first half production, um, just short of 450,000 ounces for the for the full year, targeting plus for the for the half year, targeting plus 500,000 ounces in the um, in the second half. Um, Q3 was really strong, so we released those numbers uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, um, just short of um, 250,000 ounces for the quarter, um, and we expect Q4 to be even um, even stronger. What that's driven for us, those increases in gold production, um, have really been grade-driven increases, some volume, but pr predominantly grade-driven increases. So they've really, they've really driven these, uh, these unit cost uh, metrics down, which is all about margins. So you see here what truly are industry-leading numbers. So um, operating cash costs, uh, sub $300. I should stress these are all these are all in US dollars. We're a US dollar reporter, so in US dollars, sub three hundred dollar um, operating cash costs uh, and um, all in sustaining costs in the mid five hundreds. So um, again, as uh, as Peter was saying, I I'll let you do the maths on that, but it's um, uh, pretty stunning margins. Um, a comparison to some of our peers, and and and, and I use that word uh, uh, really, really clearly. You know, we. So, so where we sit, um, these are consensus full year, all in sustaining costs in US dollars against us, the, the group of majors. Um, overnight, our 
you know, on, on closing price last night, our share, our market capitalisation is around $12 billion Canadian on our, um, on our primary listing. We're also listed um, in New York and on the ASX um, as, um, as well. So, so it's a, it's a, a, a try listing. Um, our home exchange is the, is the TSX, uh, $12 billion market cap Canadian. Um, and it's really been driven by these sorts of um, unit cost performances. That's, uh, that's fed through to, um, to, to cash flow. Uh, who, who would have thought you could, uh, you could operate a, a mining business and generate um, significant amounts of, of free cash? Um, last quarter, we generated just short of $150 million US free cash. Um, so uh, we have um, just over $600 million US on the balance sheet, and that's rapidly growing. Um, this is our own internal projections based upon our mine plans over the next three years, uh, and we see that growing to um, you know, a billion and a half on, on these assumptions, and these assumptions are conservative relative to the current spot price. So, so clearly, um, what are we going to do with that? Um, organic growth is, is key. Uh, I'll talk about the major shaft project that we're committing to, or that we have committed to, and that's underway at Macassar. Um, I'll talk about uh, I've, I've spoken about the Northern Territory and the um, internal uh, work that we've done there. Um, absolute commitment to exploration. We've got 15 draw rigs drilling at Fosterville at the moment, nine underground and six on surface. So uh, we're leaving no stone unturned in trying to find the next pieces, and, and, and we will find the next pieces. Um, and, and then looking after our shareholders as well. So, so increasing our, our dividend, um, and there's significantly more room for us to um, increase this, this further, uh, and, uh, and, and continuing to buy shares back as well. Um, stepping into the assets themselves, so Fosterville Gold Mine's about 20 kilometres from Bendigo. Uh, and, uh, and it's really transformed into a, uh, a, a, a true industry giant. So um, from a production base, this operation started in 2005, from a consistent production base of around about 100,000 ounces per annum, um, underground, su refractory sulphide, um, we have uh, expanded this to this year will be near 600,000 ounces of, um, of full year production. Um, the last quarter was our, uh, was our a record quarter, 158,000 ounces, um, some exceptional um, costs, uh, uh, cost metrics um, in all of that. Um, grade through the mill for the last two quarters, around 40 grams. So, you know, in, a, in an industry where um, the average underground gold mine might be four to five, the average open pit might be one to two, uh, these are exceptional grades. Um, and, and and we, and we are blessed with this uh, in combination with Macassar. Um, we do see that growth continuing. We do see that um, those levels being sustained. We, we uh, issued three-year guidance earlier this year at around about those levels over that three-year period. Um, and as I touched on, um, with drilling the amount of holes that we're doing, uh, we'll rapidly find out how long we can continue this for as well. Um, the transformation's really been driven by grade, as I've touched on. These are reserve um, ounces and grade at the end of each of these, uh, these years, going back to being a, essentially a five gram um, reserve grade, uh, a, sulf a refractory sulphide system um, uh, five or six years ago, to, uh, to now being the super high grade 31 gram per tonne uh, reserve um, with 2.7 million ounces. on track to achieve guidance this year. So we've mined, we've produced uh, just over 427,000 ounces for the first nine months of this year. We see a strong Q4 coming based upon um, on grade. Uh, and we see ourselves comfortably meeting both the production and cash cost guidance that we've, uh, that we've, that we've issued. Lots more to find as well. So what we have here, I'll see if I can find the pointer. So this is the swan zone in here, the super high grade. This is the Phoenix trend through here. This is the Harrier trend. Uh, and four kilometres to the north, we've, uh, we've encountered uh, another one, um, uh, Robbins Hill. Uh, our mining lease is 28 square kilometres. We've got 1,400 square kilometres of exploration tenure in the camp. 
we think this is camp scale. Uh, and the reason we think that is that we've seen that grade increase here. We've also seen it increase here at depth. And it's a grade and, and geology, um, it's a mineralisation style change. Uh, and we've also seen it here. So um, what we would expect uh, is that uh, in, the, in the not too distant future, we'll be committing to a drive to access uh, Robbins Hill um, as a third production area for us um, and, and take advantage of that you know, really strong organic growth potential that we've got because we have spare mill capacity as well. So we can see further legs to this story. Uh, turning, to, uh, turning to Canada, so we have uh, a, a, a quite an extensive holding in, um, in, in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt in um, Northern Ontario. So uh, we have, along the Porcupine Desta Fault, we have um, the Holt Holloway Complex, which Holt Holloway and Taylor, all in current operation. Uh, and at the town of Kirkham Lake itself, we have the Macassar Mine. Macassar is uh, a grand old mine, uh, which continuous almost continuous operation since 1933, over five million ounces mined, and remarkably, its best years are still ahead of it. It's uh, it is it's truly phenomenal. It is a um, it's a deep shaft access mine. Uh, as a consequence, as a driver, um, we have uh, we've this has been a, a, a world leader in terms of battery electric vehicles. The, the world's first. Um, a uh, battery electric 40 tonne underground truck um, was, was developed for and is in operation at Macassar. Um, the, uh, apologies. The, uh, the reserve grade, as I've touched on before, is exceptional. And this is a growth story for us because we see this to go, uh, operation going to, to plus 400,000 ounces um, as well. So, um, so a little on that. We can see again, this has been a... a a growth story through discovery. So um, Macassar, 100,000 ounces of annual production growing to last year at 240 and this year in excess of that. So we would expect again to be record production. It's been largely a grade driven um, increase, some, some volume, but largely a grade, a grade driven increase uh, on the basis of the discovery um, uh, that, have been, uh, that have been made in the South Mine complex. This big breakout is a volume-based breakout. So, so that is the development of a new uh, hoisting shaft, which essentially doubles production, but I'll talk more about that. So, uh, so number four shaft, this is our um, single largest growth project that we have in the portfolio at the moment. Um, currently, number three shaft at Macassar's, uh, 2,000 tonnes per day combined all waste. The mills are 2,000 tonnes per day um, uh, mill, uh, only about half of that 2,000 tonnes per day is, um, is all, so it's about half full. So this is a, this is a 4,000 tonne per day um, shaft. Uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to forgive the, uh, the, uh, the Imperial, uh, but it's about 2.3 kilometres or thereabouts. Um, so it's, a, so it's a, deep, uh, a deep shaft, it's a deep operation. Um, it's, a 400 and, uh, it's a $320 million project in, um, in total. Year-to-date spend's been 42. Um, it's on track, and it's on track for uh, the ability for us to substantially increase production from 2023 um, at Macassar um, to really remove that bottleneck. So that's exceptional for us. Um, as I said, for an operation that's been in, in operation since 1933, uh, there's a whole lot more to be found here, and we've, we've released um, a couple of press releases throughout the, um, the year and some um, exceptional numbers but it really does continue to grow. So this is, in blue, the material that's been mined previously. This is the reserves in the South Mine Complex. It's a different orientation, but there are multiple zones and it's not, clear, it's not closed off. So uh, we will see um, the likelihood, we believe, of, uh, of significant extensions here. So just to wrap up, um, and, and I, I just really want to emphasise all of those points as well. Um, you know, we've been rewarded by the market, but we think there's much more to come. So we have growing low-cost production. We have further growth levers within our, within our portfolio. None of our mills are full, uh, and we are committing industry-leading um, exploration investment per production ounce to finding more to be able to fill those mills. So that's the great lever for us. Um, putting in the number four shaft at Macassar is a clear and obvious one. 
turning the Northern Territory assets into a production unit is, a, is another one. But again, we see these levers. Industry leading unit costs, earnings and cash flow. So um, we are a cash rich um, business and we'll continue to look for opportunities to, um, to grow further and reward our shareholders. Um, significant exploration potential, building that cash position uh, and, uh, and, and the markets rewarded us to date. But again, I want to emphasise we think there's much more to come. Thanks.